The time is coming swiftly. The middle rounds are now close for the unskilled. Yet here you are, unprepared, you fools. This season you will find all kinds of foes, eager to watch your draft crumble with wasted picks. There can only be one ultimate draft kit. Only one that can bend them to its will. And it does not share power. You must wield the UDK and send your opponents back to the shadows. You shall not pass. On this chance to send your league mates into the deep, fly, you fools, to ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Uh, welcome in. We got a surprise for you. Surprise, surprise. It's me. It's more than just us today. A bonus episode of the show. That's right. What do you you mean it's more than just us? It's more than just the three of us. It's a special day. Well, the UDK is not a surprise. Nor a person. But Well, (laughs) it's UDK day, so we're doing a special bonus show. Okay. Yeah, we are. (laughs) Yeah, we're here. I just don't understand how there's more than the three of us on camera right now. It's not just us. It's me, Mike, Andy, and the UDK. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's that, that was, was clear. Very obvious. Very um, clear. Welcome in Saturday edition of the Fantasy Footballers. It is June first, which means the Ultimate Draft Kit is live. It's available. You can go and spend the entirety of your day and tomorrow and the day after perusing the fine contents. I mean, pop open a bottle of udk and take a sip oh, i was gonna say you're probably gonna need some acetaminophen or something by the end of this because of just overload or? yeah okay well, you know like after a, a good workout you're sore not a doctor but but I, my... I can i can prescribe ibuprofen guys i feel pretty <laughs> uh pretty okay with that to be fair you prescribed tylenol there yeah you did oh did yeah, i you did I yes. Yes. so I not, very guys. obviously not a doctor <laughs> i can do both <laughs> And it's look, it's a Saturday edition. We've got the Deucers in here in Deucers Alley. <laughs> what? <laughs> he tried to power through. It did not work. I uh I, I threw the camera over to the Deucers because I mean they're celebrating the UDK today, and obviously the Falcon has got his Saturday shirt on. Oh man. Because <laughs> he is oh yeah. Yeah, He's, let it be visible. Are you in I mean, Hawaii? That's a Jimmy Buffett uh UDK type of day. He's also got sandals on, guys. Does he? Yeah. The outfit is complete. Think I didn't see those sandals? And yeah. swim trunks. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. Very excited. Um, I, I, the last word count I had as of right now is 67,000 words and counting. There will be more. There will be more. They, this thing is um, robust, to say the least. All of our We just went through and kind of fine-tuned our tiers yesterday Mm -hmm. for our tier based rankings we've got the stat projection so you can go see like the neatest way to use it is to go import or plug in your league settings take a look at what the rankings look like considering your league setting maybe it's a ppr maybe it's a standard league Um, we play in half point per reception but plug that in see the updated stat projections and rankings uh 100 plus player profile videos that's so important because you you say all those words that's in there and I'm like, well, if you're like me and you don't like reading, right? we got video. It's all right. Yeah, that was the first response from Al Borland. He's like, that is too many words. Like, you don't have to read them all. They're available to you. It's got something for everybody. Yeah. Some people can read well. <laughs> um, today's going to be an explain yourself episode. So we're going to dig into uh, one player ranking for each of us that is a little bit different and kind of explain why we have them ranked outside of the consensus. Cause 
We each put together our rankings for the draft kit, for the website. You can see the free rankings on thefantasyfootballers.com. And you'll notice that there are, you know, there are players that we have agreement on. And then there are players that we have ranked pretty dramatically different. And we talk about them all off season. We're always tweaking the rankings, but we'll we'll give each other a chance to explain yourself mm -hmm. today. Obviously, I will explain very well. I think I'll explain pretty well as well, oh, Andy. Man. I You're... think I will sway you. Jason's holding up his golden ticket. Today. See, the thing about giving you one golden ticket mm -hmm. for one argument mm -hmm. is that when it's gone, it's gone. Oh, I know. That's I why I never use it. He's using the... <laughs> I, it, it expires this season, but, uh, you know, I'm playing a long game It's just because you here. don't know when you'll really need it. Yeah. Like, you'll think you need it. I won't need it today because when i explain myself you're gonna be like oh yeah i was wrong you were right hmm. i am ugly you we'll are change handsome. our rankings right on the spot yeah for sure so uh welcome man surprise episode of the show happy to be with you give you a little extra content for the weekend um here's a quick question came in from youtube which new england wide receiver do you think will finish higher than their current average draft position and uh New England's in the category of teams that are not fun to think about this offseason. That's a fair point. But that also uh, can afford an opportunity. I think the Giants are a little bit in that category. I, I think there's a handful of teams where the wide receiver rooms or the you know all of the pass catchers combined with the quarterback situation. It's, gar it's garbage. Yeah, it just doesn't look. Good. I mean, and and so and and every year we are surprised at times. So, um, <clears throat> here are the ADPs right now for the receiver, the receiver room in New England. Wide receiver sixty eight off the board right now, which is that's the top, that's the top of the New England list. Right. Jalen Polk is sitting there, thirty seventh pick in the draft. Um, which, by the way, that is the latest over the last six years for a wide receiver one. As in, as in the first receiver drafted from this team is going at pick sixty eight. The yeah, person that's, with, that's insane. Where the best get like our best guess of this will be their number one wide receiver is going at sixty eight. Not far behind Demario Douglas, wide receiver seventy seven was a rookie last year. Definitely uh, flashed at times. Uh, I think I I think we all kind of liked what we saw in the field when he had opportunities. Yeah, but I would say he popped. But yeah popped oh man come on man isn't that his name yeah that's his <laughs> nickname brother oh man that is mario sad. pop douglas it's saturday he doesn't flash he loves that soda pop yeah uh sorry i guess He's a sugar fiend <laughs> javon baker at wide receiver 82 kendrick Bourne at wide receiver 99 <laughs> i yeah. this is why when i saw this quick question i almost just canned it i almost just said yeah this is too boring of a discussion, but at the same time, Mike, what did you say? It's garbage, but sometimes nasty. there's there's delicious garbage. And look, oh, nasty. nasty boys are all over the place. You got to find them. My thought is Demario Douglas will 100% outperform wide receiver 77. Now, that's a caveat because there's a caveat there. Like he could end up the wide receiver 57 and not matter for fantasy. Right. But I think Demario Douglas is the most guaranteed to see consistent snaps. He's versatile, so they can use him in screen game. They can use him down the field. He averaged almost eight targets last year. Um, it, it, you know, seven targets and 56 receiving yards a game. That's not too shabby. That's not the end of the world. No. And, like, it, the two veterans, Demario Douglas, I feel very confident he outperforms his ADP. And Kendrick Bourne at wide receiver 99, who just signed uh, a new three-year deal. Yeah, it's only five and a half guaranteed, but it has some – inflated stuff Kendrick Bourne will outproduce wide receiver 99 like that's I will lock that in but it's the same argument of will that actually turn into something I don't know we just when is when is a player a veteran because like Demario Douglas is not a first year player I feel like he's year a two really yeah that's all it takes. You're yeah. not like a second year player. You're... Based on the dynasty show, you're really not in a position to talk no. <laughs> about who's a year two player, my, year three player. My point is, I just don't feel like all year what two year players is are considered a veteran. They're like they... no, they're not. They're not veterans, but relative to the other guys we're talking about, they are. I think that's what Mike meant. Like Baker and Polk are rookies, so by extension, Demario Douglas is a 
is the most experienced on the team outside of an injured born. Well, so would you define it? So you're a rookie, you're a second year player, you're a vet. Uh, yeah, that's that's how I see it. I think okay. we, I think you're not really a true vet until you're in the third year. Because your second year, you're learning how to not be a rookie. You're learning how to lead. You're learning okay. how to like. Oh wow, I'm I'm not you know at rookie mini camp. I'm like I'm, you don't have to learn how to not be a rookie. You just aren't. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, yeah. I, look, I, this was a yeah. this was an open. Uh, question we for conversation. We just had a discussion on the Thursday episode of the show. If you're not the number one overall pick and you're a rookie, your average line for your number one receiver was not fantasy, like super fantasy relevant. Right. It was like kind of wide receiver three or worse range. So because of that, like you could have Jacoby Brissett. Like that is still way up in the air. Like I, yeah. think, I think there's a pretty decent chance Brissett's their guy for the beginning of the year. But, you know, the real question to me isn't will they outperform it by a little bit. It's like... Who are you taking the shot on? If yeah, they like who, who's got the best chance three weeks into the year because you took them with your last pick or you picked them up off the waiver wire like right after the draft to still be on your roster? Like who's the most likely to still be on your roster three weeks into the year? Uh, that would be Jalen Polk probably just because he's a rookie. You, you think he, he should grow into that role as the season goes on. He had good film. I really liked him. I, I saw I you know, he's more of a, a of a slot player, but he can go down the field. He's got great hands. I saw when I watched him like some Anquan Bolden to him, I don't think that this quarterback situation is going to allow any wide receiver here to really be uh very, very relevant. What if, what if it's Jacoby for eight games? It, then I would I would lean towards Demario Douglas. Yeah, it's, it's saying Polk in the beginning is, I, I would say, you said to grow into it. Like, he'll be off your team then. Well, I'm, I'm and we saying didn't you don't talk. usually, if you're drafting rookies, you're not going to cut them oh, when yeah, they don't will. pop right off the bat. Oh, you're yeah, going to you give them time. It's, no, it's, it I'm is not a, giving him time with my last pick in the draft. He's on the way out. That, that is part of the issue for rookies. It, rookie wide receivers is they historically do much, much better over the second half of the season once they have acclimated, once they've learned how to be a rookie. <laughs> uh, they then they start, you know, turning it on at the end of the year. So for the question of the first three weeks, who's still on your roster? It's Douglas because he will put up some points and he'll look like a a player that hey maybe in a pinch for my second flex or when the bye weeks hit me I could put Douglas in. But second half for me, I would, it's the bets on Polk. I and, and let's I mean Juju Smith Schuster and KJ Osborne yes, and Demario Douglas could be the Top three wide receivers to start the year on the field. Yeah, very possible. So, uh, you know, people are really excited about Javon Baker. I've seen the Javon Baker quad pictures showing up all over the internet because this is his quad season. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that Javon was on the, the quad squad. He's on the quad squad. Yeah. I'm take a little, look that up. Take a little quad look, <laughs> glance. See um, some Javon Baker quads. Yeah, I mean, he's got some. He's got big quads. He does. He's got some impressive quads. That dude squats. <laughs> <laughs> so uh was that discussion i'm gonna pull al borland over there was that discussion worth anything <laughs> oh my god that's a tough question all right news. i don't like talking about patriots wide receivers at all okay yeah well we, we won't have to anymore news and notes from around the league I knew we should have cut that out. Yeah, and I knew that's that was all right a waste. because we 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 paid the price. Yeah, and now we got it out of the way. We won't have to talk about them as we get closer to the season. The next person asks, you just point him to this Saturday Absolutely. bonus episode. That's what the people want. They want the bonus Saturday New England wide receiver deep dive. You're welcome. How about this, Jalen Waddle? Just signed a three-year, eighty-four million dollar extension with seventy-six million dollars guaranteed. Get paid. I believe that makes him a, a top five wide receiver in terms of the contract. Correct. Ooh. Yeah, no, I mean, this is great. Does it make you, you feel better? No, As a dynasty so, waddle manager who has really made the wrong choice <laughs> in his trade. Remo just, okay, it, remove CeeDee Lamb from the conversation. Jalen Waddle, how do you feel about him moving forward for dynasty? Uh, Jalen Waddle's a, a really good dynasty player. I've got him as a top 15 wide receiver. Uh, he, he's one of the top 15 on your roster he uh, well certainly on my <laughs> roster um yeah I mean this is a player who has already in his career you know been uh, the wide receiver seven we know he has that in him 
He was hobbled a lot last season. Tyree Kill probably has two seasons left. Now they're signing him long term. So Waddle is great. I, I think people are overblowing his down season I this agree. past year. It, it was disappointing, but that's not the new normal. I, I, I see him as a, a very, very solid wide receiver, too, with wide receiver one upside should injuries happen, or especially if you're talking dynasty long term, he should develop into a wide receiver one for fantasy. Like the numbers of, you know, as a rookie, he was a wide receiver 16 as a rookie. That's sensational. Averaged 12.1 points per game in a half point scoring format, was on the field for 78% of snaps in games he was playing. This past year, 11.6 points per game. I mean, that's not that far off from that wide receiver 16 pace he was on, and he was only on the field for about half of the snaps. Yeah, I think the you know the rookie year I throw out for Waddle from utilization standpoint because they brought in a different head coach and they threw the ball downfield. But I think – Okay, I, so you like the sophomore where he was 13 well, no, points that, a game. Yeah, I do. I do like that. I think I just think that Jalen Waddle in this offense is a 75-catch player. I don't think he's a 100-plus catch player because it, it's just not how it's designed. But last year was definitely – uh, not a right representation of his value in fantasy. I agree. He missed games, so his end-of-season ranking was below average. He hobbled out of games oftentimes, and he didn't have the touchdowns that he had the year before, and that made a tremendous difference. And he's probably – he should be a six- to eight-touchdown type of player in this offense, no question, if not more. So, yeah, I, I don't – you know, a lot had to go right to be wide receiver seven. In terms of the big plays, putting up almost fourteen hundred yards, but a lot had to go wrong for him to be the wide receiver at thirty four. I think I think he's being undervalued. Yeah, but like Andy, for your like, he's a seventy five catch guy. He had seventy two last year. Yep, in fourteen games, playing fifty six percent of, of sure. the snaps. That's a good so, point. To me, maybe he can go. I up. think he's an eighty plus reception guy. How about eighty five? Sure. Why eighty eight? Let's take it easy. All right. Let's take it easy. <laughs> uh, I, Eighteen yards per catch is outrageous. Like that's. You can't get there, but fourteen last year, you you give with, me fourteen a that's catch. Our discussion in the eighties is ab, give that. I'll take that with all his day. speed and this system. You 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 can see fifteen being very reasonable, very normal, very repeatable. So if if you're at fifteen yards a catch and you're at eighty eighty five receptions, that, that's going to be a wonderful fantasy season because you know if you're at that yards per catch, some of those went to the house. Yeah, yeah, he he's more volatile than other receivers, but he also can win you a week. And uh, so he signs a big deal. And that's kind of exciting for those dynasty managers it like is. Jason. Uh, also, you, guys, you guys make me hate Jalen Watt. I just <laughs> want you to know. Trade like, him to me. <laughs> sure. I will do oh, yeah. the trade yeah. that you I will. make me do. I'll no, make you an offer right now. <laughs> Ooh. Mike Evans. Uh, no, thank you. All right. Broncos fifth round running back. Audric Estime is part of the – competition for that running back room yep he underwent a small knee scope and should be available for the start of training well, camp they estimate he'll be back all by right. training okay. camp all right come on no uh, no that was so good you had to call swish you didn't call swish quick enough i didn't have to call swish everyone saw that go in i didn't even touch the net that was busted <laughs> that is it for news we'll take a break and come back with uh some of our more interesting rankings from the UDK. Okay, we're back. Um, before we get into this segment, I realized that I have messed up. Uh-oh. Okay. And Al knows I've messed up. Al's just... <laughs> you, were going, you went over this so many Al's times. Al's just sitting over there, and put he put some work into it. I mean, this is UDK Celebration Day. Yeah. Special bonus episode. I mean, I'm surprised he hasn't walked out of the studio. Al, are you doing okay? I'm good, man. All right. We he we prepared something special. It's gonna be even better for the YouTubers out there. But um in the world of What do we I haven't seen this yet. Me what either. do we got? We just have like a, a you know, Jason, he's a man of many talents. Oh no. <laughs> and um <laughs> you know, he celebrates the UDK in his own way, and we've had different songs and different special bits to celebrate the UDK, so we got another. <laughs> UDK, boo, yeah. Lil Big Shimmy, yeah. UDK, boo. Huh? UDK. UDK, UDK, UDK. <laughs> 
UDK, 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 UDK. I don't know when you had the time to to make that performance. You can draw Jason. a crowd. There's a lot of people there. You're darn right. I got the moves. I mean, Al's putting that together all day yesterday. And again, let's not exaggerate. <laughs> he was putting that together for some of the day, but I just, it, he couldn't get it out of his head. He'd just be walking around the office and all of a sudden you'd hear, UDK, 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 and he'd, you do the voice and everything. Oh, everybody that just heard that will be doing the same thing. Yeah. I hope so. Sorry for do uh, that making Every time wait. you open the app. When you, UDK. You go sit down on the toilet and you're like, oh, what do I want to look at? Little Big Oh, UDK. <laughs> <laughs> the lyrics uh, are super easy to memorize. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're not complicated. Um, let's jump in. Quite well, thank you. No. Clearly you are not. No rational person would do as you have done. Explain yourself. Well, 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 we've got some rankings, disparities, differences of opinion. And we begin with, I think, uh, I think this one stood out more than, than most. Uh, when we looked at the rankings and we got done with our individual stat projections and there's, it's a player that's, he's been around the block. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. he's, he's on his way around the block again. Mm -hmm. We've seen, I think make him sound like he's 30. Yeah. I mean, I, I he's, he's not 30, yeah. uh, but we've seen a lot of him and I, I thought we knew what he was. And then we get to the rankings and Mike, you know, Mike slides a minute at wide receiver 24. Right with ADP. Yeah, I mean, and, and you've got uh, the last three years for this player, wide receiver 16, 18, and 12. I've got him at 19. I don't feel like that's the end of the world. But DK Metcalf, Jason, has slotted in as his wide receiver 10, mm -hmm. which if that's a prophetic uh, reality, that'll be his highest finish since back in 2020. Right, also known as not his highest finish. Yes. Because he's finished higher if you go back to 2019. I mean, was, you're trying to set me up for failure, bro. No, I, I 2019 he was he wide was, receiver 32, so you're very like that's not accurate. But or, in 2020 he was the wide receiver seven. seven. Hold yes. on, hold on. Yeah, I'm confused. No, I mean, I I'm all I said was the highest higher. finish since then. He's finished higher than how 10 soon, already. I know the time warps a thing, <laughs> but how soon do you think? Like, how recent was 2020? I believe it was four years ago. Okay, just making sure, Jason. With yes. a wide receiver ranking of 10 for DK Metcalf. Explain yourself! DK Metcalf has name fatigue right now. You guys are living in the name fatigue. You, 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 you started by saying he's been around the block. We know what he is. Well, neither one of you have him ranked w even to where he's finished the last four seasons. He's finished above both your rankings the last four seasons in a row. He's finished above ADP the last four seasons in a row, and I think there are major upgrades for him coming this season. So let me explain myself. First of all, he's the clear alpha among these three wide receivers. Yes, I know you've got Tyler Lockett and you've got the you know the five the fifth year player uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba on the ro <laughs> on the roster, but he's the alpha here. He's uh, the, he's best against zone among these three wide receivers, and he's the best among man. In the entire NFL, his yards per route run. He's the best among run, all men. Well, he is. He's a man among men. Man coverage. Yes, man coverage. He is best in yards per route run among the entire NFL. He's best against zone among this uh, receiver core. He does what you want for fantasy. Okay, not all targets are the same. We talk about that with running backs. Like a target is worth so much more than a carry. Well, not all targets are the same for wide receivers. For a target, a target's worth a target, right? A red zone target's worth 1.7 targets. Inside the 10, it's worth 2.1 targets. An end zone target, when you're targeted on that paint, that's worth 2.6 targets. He leads the NFL in end zone targets since being drafted in 2019. And sometimes they just don't get caught, and sometimes they do. You've seen him have double-digit touchdown uh, you know, seasons, and you've seen him last year where he was under his expectation four touchdowns he should have had more touchdowns I'm not saying like oh I think he should I'm saying based upon the targets he had the end zone targets he literally should have had more and he already had a good season 
he has weeks that he can do things like where he was the number one wide receiver with 124 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, he did that against me, and he get, did it against Dallas, and it made no sense, and I was really sad. But he's also consistent. He's a B in our consistency range. He is a really, really good wide receiver. Nobody is saying DK Metcalf isn't a good wide receiver, right? You guys have him ranked as a uh, wide receiver two. On a fantasy points per target basis, he is up there with the best, with Cooper Cup, with CeeDee Lamb, with Devontae Adams. The selling points for Metcalf are very simple. He is still in his prime. He's 26 years old. He's entering year six. Historically, year five and six, compared to the others, have the highest ceiling for fantasy wide receivers. The offense just hit the wrong side of variance last year. They ranked fourth in pace, seventh in pass rate, but dead last in time of possession. Their defense is not good, which is a great problem to have. The thing that I love looking at him when I statted him out for the UDK, when I was doing the research, it's Ryan Grubb. I do not like Shane Waldron. I don't think Shane Waldron is a great offensive coordinator. It's some of what scares me about the Bears hiring him over, even though they've got so many great weapons there. Ryan Grubb is coming over from the University of Washington and their record-setting offense. They rank number one in the nation in passing with 369.8 yards per game. But if you look at their system... Shout out and Michael their, Penix Jr. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if you look at their system and their players and their personnel, it lines up identically with Seattle. And this isn't just me talking. This is actually Grubb saying that <laughs> when he came over, he said, quote, there's no question when I was looking at who is here, and the tools that are here in Seattle, I thought there was a lot of familiarity in what would be applicable in this system. And then he goes on to say, you got the big-bodied X in DK and Rome. So he's putting DK Metcalf in the Roma Dunze role, where he was the clear alpha. And he talks up JSN as perfect for that Jalen Polk role. Like, these roles are established. The, he had three great wide receivers last year. He's got three great wide receivers this year. But there is a one. There is an alpha. There is an X. This is how Grubb has talked about him. So you've got a wide receiver in his prime who's already been a top 10 wide receiver in the past, has been higher than his ADP the last four years running, now has a new system in place that I think is going to highlight him even better. And if you compare the passing game emphasis on deep posts and vertical routes between what Adunze did and what DK Metcalf does well, they're almost identical. Like they... It's exactly perfect for this system. So when I was statting him out for the UDK, I'm like, okay, he's going to be the primary target in this offense. He's going to get the most valuable type of targets in this offense. I don't see how it goes wrong, especially, like, let's say he doesn't finish as the wide receiver 10, where I have him ranked. He's being drafted as the wide receiver 24. Outside of being injured, there's no way he drops that far. So you're drafting a player at his floor, and I do think he has the ceiling of, of being the wide receiver five. I don't think wide receiver 10 is absolutely his ceiling. He's a guy that can go out there and catch 13 touchdowns. And if that happens with everything else that he does, I think you guys are the ones really who need to explain themselves. Well, I look, you have them higher than ADP. We have them slightly lower than ADP. To your credit, the second half of last year, even though it was a struggle for Geno Smith, his pace from week 10 on was 71 for 12, 46, and 11. So he's on the touchdown pace. I... The the kind of counterpoints, briefly, that would factor into the decision would be um, things don't always go well coming from the collegiate game to the NFL and trying to implement a system. Yeah, Cliff, does he? Does Cliff he get Kingsbury, to... Matt Rule, and well, Urban, he, he Urban Meyer. But and he didn't have to move. Joe Brady. He, and he didn't, he, No, he, he did not have Washington. to move. You see, because he has the same house. Yeah. yeah just yeah, different 100%. team. Does yeah. DK get to play against college DBs? It's going to make him look like it, yeah. Uh, and then the other part would just be like Geno Smith is a question mark. Like, uh, can he bounce back to form? Um, that that's not like you know you're you're banking on you're banking on Geno Smith. It's part of the equation. Geno Smith had a very down year last year. He did. Yep. DK Metcalf, everyone thinks, has a very down year last year. He was the wide receiver sixteen, and he missed a game. So it's like okay, that so that's the down year. Yeah, Great. I mean. If you started the year with DK Metcalf, it was uh yeah, it was a down year. Well, I mean he it, he, it was he terrible. Was really good the first three weeks, and then he got injured a couple weeks after the bye and then took a couple weeks to get back. I mean, you had a stretch that was bad, but it started good and then it finished awesome once he was back from injury. And, Mike, he, and again, do you have anything on the add? season he was a consistency of a B and the wide receiver sixteen. So it wasn't like it all came in one. It was he was really good. 
it, it we'll, we'll see how defenses play against that scheme because the you can't argue with the, the numbers of how good DK is against man coverage, but teams aren't doing that as much, and he was not nearly as good against zone. So if they're getting more zone against him, then then we'll see. I, but I, I, I it's the the argument of you're drafting him at his floor is compelling. I will I will agree he is not as good at zone as he is at man, but I want to make sure that that is not mistaken to be he's not good against zone. He's great against zone, better than the other two wide receivers on his team, but not as good as he is against man. All right, speaking of man, we need to talk about a man who in most years might have been the number one wide receiver drafted because he's so talented, goes to a place with no target competition. We're talking about the wide receiver 19 above DK Metcalf in average draft position, who I've got at 22, Andy's got at 18. The man, the myth, the legend, Malik <laughs> Neighbors. <laughs> Mike, you've got him at wide receiver 37. Yes. It's time for you to explain I, yourself. I'm not even angry about this ranking. I'm just disappointed. Right. I'm just, yeah, you're the I'm father. Just, I'm just disappointed. And that hurts Mike the most. Because I thought that you could see things clearer. I And you've rubbed Vaseline all up on those eyes. And I you can't have seen see clearly nothing. that Malik Neighbors is an incredible prospect. Uh, I think the, the introduction – Helps highlight the problem that's going on with Malik Neighbors. Yeah, why'd you call him a legend? The man, the myth, why'd the you legend, call him a legend who has taken zero snaps in the NFL is being drafted as the man, the myth, the legend. You said it, wide receiver 19 on sleeper right now, wide receiver 20 over on underdog. He is being drafted as the second highest rookie wide receiver in ADP ever. And he's number two because right now Marvin Harrison is going also uh, extremely high. So I'll just start it off here. Where he is in my rankings, 37, sounds absolutely abysmal. Great. But, it is. <laughs> but the point, my point being, guys right around there, like the point differential is it's very small. Uh, like if I just give him another touchdown, he jumps up four spots. Like it's it, it doesn't take – How a, many touchdowns did you give him? Uh, well, I will, I will get to that. Zero? <laughs> <laughs> I have him sitting at 5.6 touchdowns right now based off of uh, his statistics. Yes, he's an incredible prospect. And the I projected him out with really solid numbers. I gave him a 25% target share. That would be tied with Mike Evans for the sixth highest for a rookie over the last decade. It's got a he has and that turned into 127 targets. The problem is the ADP and the versus the Giants. Last year, Giants, 30th in points per game, 31st in passing yards per game, three and out on over 40% of their drives. Sounds like they needed Malik Neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, and you see, well, there's nowhere to go but up. But have we have just, we've discovered many times on this show, that's not true. You can go to the side. Like Maybe you don't go further down, but you can move laterally forever and ever and ever. They have a quarterback problem. Is it Daniel Jones coming off the ACL? Is it Drew Locke? Right now, it certainly sounds like it's going to be Seems Daniel. Seems like Jones. Right now, it sounds like it's going to be Daniel Jones, who, again, will be coming off of an ACL tear. The best fantasy finish for a wide receiver for Daniel Jones is wide receiver 35. That was Darius Slayton back in 2019. I'm not comparing the talent level of Malik Neighbors to Darius Slayton. There is a massive gap. But I am saying that this offense with Daniel Jones and his passing prowess is a problem. Over the last decade, we looked at every single rookie wide receiver over the last decade. If a team is in the bottom 10 of passing yards per game, we have one. One rookie wide receiver in the top 30. Top 30. And look, I, I've got the Giants projected in the bottom 10 of passing yards. You guys aren't that far off from my projections when you actually dive into it. Mike Evans got there because he had 12 receiving touchdowns. So there is an outlier that can happen for him. But overall, I'm really, really worried about his situation in this first year. And just being the number one target of a team, volume is incredible. Jay, you said, but targets are absolutely different. Garrett Wilson, the most targets ever through the first two years of his career. Have we been happy with the Garrett Wilson ride for fantasy football? Absolutely 
not. So if you put Malik Neighbors like back where we used to draft rookies, I would be all about it, all about that upside. But wide res- he's being drafted as a top 20 guy. It's frustrating. And he's be- like he's being drafted right. Here's your choice. ADP if you're yeah, going on a wide receiver, ADP, yeah. Debo, Michael Pittman, Jalen Waddle, Devonta Smith, Cooper Cup. Oh, who's this guy? DK Metcalf. Yeah, well, I'm not Mal- taking him. I'm not I, look, I'm not taking him <laughs> over DK. After Mal- but but if you want him on your team, these are the guys, these are the wide receivers that you will have That's to That's redraft ADP right now? Yes. You will <clears throat> act, you will actively be choosing your opportunity <clears throat> co- your opportunity cost for for Malik Neighbors is Jalen Waddle. There it's was a, Debo. There was a point in time where I thought Malik Neighbors would probably end up a my guy. And that was because I thought that the the you know, fantasy community would factor in all of these negative things they that you're are saying. Not. Like everything you say is true about the Giants. And even if you look at Daniel Jones and the kind of yardage he puts up, like two years ago, it was like 3,200 yards. Last year's pace in the games he played, not even counting the one he went out early, if you just take the games he played full, it's like a 3,000-yard pace. Now, it's a little chicken and egg, right, because you can't throw for a lot yeah. of yards with no receivers. You also had an offense built around Saquon Barkley where that was the fundamental kind of way that you tried to execute your offense. But I wish that the, the fantasy world was trying to drive that price down more effectively I, because I, I would I, if he was the wide receiver 35 oh beautiful then All we're in, not having course. this conversation no, no, no. Uh, of, of course I mean that that would be awesome and that the issue here the splaying yourself is not should he be going at ADP I, I don't have him at ADP I don't have him ranked there I think he's being drafted too high for uh, like I'll, I'll go in another much Jay. but you've got him at 37 yeah. so when you talk about those other names no I'm not taking him over DK but when I'm looking at ADP, you've got him around, you know. Yeah, let's bring some names up there. You've got Chris Godwin, Marquise Brown, Jordan Addison ahead of him. Like the, yeah, are, I wouldn't take – I'd take Neighbors over all those guys. Of course yeah. you would. There, yeah. there is the upside case to go with Malik Neighbors there. And it was the 37, is, it's don't get hung up on the 37. Like, Jay, you have him at 11.4 fantasy points per game. I have him at 10. Like, it's – Right. It's, it's not a drastic difference. The, the actual – numeric ranking of him he could be like by the by the the time the season starts maybe he'll be up in the low 20s for me but that still won't change the fact that it's yeah, uh, yeah this is why we tier base draft by the way because he he's going to be in a bucket with a bunch of other guys and, and just make sure yeah, you're i don't attention even to tears i don't think i you know, the names you mentioned maybe maybe i would take him over one or two of those guys maybe right depending on roster construction like if i have no volatility at wide receiver one and i want volatility like i think malik neighbors is gonna have a a 200 yard game this year like something like that if i want some more volatility then maybe i'm taking him over one of the steadier players around his adp but it's it's a compelling case against, against and let me be clear this brings me pain I love Malik. It brings us pain. Too. I love Malik Neighbors. I think that long term, Malik Neighbors, it's going to be incredible. But this first year, with the way that everything is sitting right now, I, I want to get on board. But based off of what the market is doing, I, I can't get a ticket. I'm priced out. I yeah, and and I'm not sure you really want to get on board with that ranking. I got to be honest. That's what, with, a, with I think because you ranked him there, you don't want to get on board. You want to get off <laughs> off board, whatever that means. All right, quick break. Back with another. It's time to turn the spotlight away from me and my egregiously low ranking of Malik neighbors <laughs> and focus on something idiotic and stupid. Oh, boy. Oh, man. That the fearless captain of this show, Mr. Andrew Holloway, is doing. Jason, our king. <laughs> Everyone's our, king. Not, yeah, not just our king. The king of fantasy football running backs, King Henry, coming off a very solid season. He's going well, to – he was on a bad team, though. He was. He was on yeah. a bad team. Still had a solid season. Now he's on a great team. Some may say a Super Bowl contending elite team. They don't do rushing touchdowns there. No, though. they just do, like, the most. Oh. They do all the rushing touchdowns. Whoops, I was wrong. I got King Henry. Get a room, guys. I got King Henry at 10. Oh, Jason, I got him at 10. you got him at 10. You're being reasonable. And Andy's over here saying he's just a bum. He's a wide receiver. He's, court- or, uh, running he's back a 18. wide receiver. He's running back 18. He's barely holding on to be an RB2. Yeah, I mean, my ranking is low for Derrick Henry. 
I agree with that. Now, I I know that uh, I don't know how much of a historical man you are, Mike, or like if you're, you know, the archaeologist. Oh, I'm, I'm a man of history. Yeah, I mean, they they dig and they find uh, relics from the ancient past, and I have yeah. yet to find a king whose reign has lasted forever in those ancient relics. So at some point in time, a reign comes to an end, and my ranking of Derrick Henry is more indicative of where I think there's a wider range of outcomes for the player this year than there has been in years past. Like the entirety of the offense in Tennessee was, we literally would joke. It's the Tennessee Derrick Henry's. We would call them the Derrick Henry's because they, he had the ball so often and that was their identity. Now he goes to Baltimore, a team that was on the cusp of Super Bowl contention last year without him by using a hodgepodge of other running backs. And so I, I acknowledge the realistic chance that Derrick Henry could have 15 touchdowns in this offense. But I do think you are entirely going to be dependent on those type of numbers at the uh, in terms of touchdowns, and that's going to be what makes or breaks Derrick Henry's season. And we can point to how many short yardage Gus Edwards touchdowns there were. That's great. But you also have an offense that the identity is Lamar Jackson. The identity is going to be you know some Zay Flowers, some Mark Andrews, um, the defense, right? Like these were not elements in play in Tennessee last year. You know, Derrick Henry had a good season, 12 touchdowns in Tennessee, had a great run in the year. Um, he's 30 years old now. That's going to be a factor. Um, uh, you know, the King is getting older and he's not going to catch passes in this offense. That's one of the, how dare you, that's one of the fundamental realities. Um, we all actually, you, you say how dare you, but we all have him catching fewer than 30. No, I, I, of, in course, our of course he's not going to catch passes. And so, you know, it's it's very difficult to see it not being a touchdown-dependent season for him. I don't think he's going to run the ball as often as he did in Tennessee uh, because the offense is going to be built around, you know, we talk about Lamar Jackson losing weight and being more agile. And like, Lamar Jackson's going to have a yardage total that's pretty significant at the position. Um, his efficiency, Derrick Henry's, has been going in the in the wrong direction. Um, I've got him down at four a carry. You guys have him down at four point four a carry. Uh, so I do think that there's just a little bit more risk, and that's baked into how I'm drafting these players. I think there's more upside with some of the other guys in 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 my rankings. So that's kind of where I have him. It's lower because I think that there's a chance that you're disappointed with the draft selection this year, which has not been a reality in the past. So that's kind of where I have him. Like in the last decade, just to give you another number. Oh, I was hoping you'd bring this. There up. are only four running backs <laughs> that are age thirty plus that hit double digit total touchdowns. It's a rare thing. Um, along with uh fewer than thirty receptions, and that is AP did it, and he was drafted to do it. Yeah. But the other three guys were not even drafted. It was just like incidental. It was Legarrette Blunt. It was Mostert last year who was late round drafted, and then Mark and, Ingram. And how they finished? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, what was like the finish of the guys that that did that had the fewer than thirty receptions? Oh, the outliers. Yeah, the outliers finished really well at two, <laughs> eight, eight, and two. So hmm. if he does something that is very low odds to do, he will have a very low odds great season. Like, like, would you say Raheem Mostert was? I mean, you drafted him in the first last year, right? No, no, sir. Oh, okay, okay. So you didn't see that coming. No, I no nobody. So there's saw been Raheem one. Mostert coming. There has been one age thirty running back drafted where you guys want to draft him that pulled it off. That's all I'm saying. The one, one in in history. So yeah. if one in history is the kind, I mean, I'm sure there was one king whose reign lasted a little bit longer. How did than he the rest. finish? <laughs> <laughs> running back two. <laughs> yes, the one guy. Yeah, I'm just saying. No, yes, if you're gonna bring so up you're the telling example. me just to let me get your argument straight. If he has a great season, he'll finish great. That's your argument right now. My if, good if, he has, if he has an amazing season statistically, you're saying that will translate to fantasy yeah, points. Try poke holes in that one. Yeah, yeah, that one seems hard to break. Yeah. Well, fewer than 30 receptions is a barometer that we're all conceding here and isn't a good thing. Over 30 is something everyone's conceding because it's called a fact. So the real question is just touchdowns. Does he get 10? Right now, his DraftKings Sportsbook line is 10 and a half. That's the oh, that's the over under. So it's not really this crazy outlier situation we're hoping for. We just need him to get ten and a half touchdowns, and then apparently 
You finished top ten according to those four. And one of the running backs was Mark Ingram on the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, in in a somewhat similar offense. Yeah, we know Lamar's not going to throw it to him. I believe that you know we talk a lot about Travis Kelsey. He's older. Your worries about him and the reason neither of you have him ranked number one. I think. Do you have him at one? I, I do don't. have him at one. I believe. Okay. I one of the one of the concerns about Travis Kelsey that was being made was. What is the goals of the of the team? Right. Is it to win a bunch of regular season games? Do you want to stretch uh, Derrick Henry out in the first eight games of the season when you need to close strong and go into the playoffs and play extra football games? Like that is a strong consideration. Like the Yeti, like sometimes the Yeti gets saved. Like he doesn't come out until the games matter. And I am concerned about that. Like if I am the Ravens and I'm going into the season with a 30-year-old Derrick Henry, my plan is not to depend on Derrick Henry to the degree that Tennessee did because I want him for the first and second and, and third round of the playoffs. I don't want to give him 25 carries a game and then lose him for the back half of the year. So I think his range of outcomes is more extreme than you two have factored in. Yeah, and I've ranked him as the king. That's fine. <laughs> That's acceptable. It's understandable. Um, I'm going to hit this button again. Oh, oh, yeah, let's go. Jay, can you do it live? I am doing it. That, this is U D K. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Little big shimmy. Yeah. Yeah. U D K. Oh. U D K. 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 Those are those are very athletic dance moves. Thank you. Uh, he's surprisingly athletic. <laughs> That's for what the, they say. the podcasters, you know, the listeners at home, you really need to watch this because <laughs> Jason's got he's putting the moves on display. Well, and you really need to get the Ultimate Draft Kit. So go to ultimatedraftkit.com, check it out. You could download the app. It is up. It is released. Not just the UDK Plus. All of it is fr out there for your perusal. I thought you were gonna say free. I thought you were about to say no. it's out there for free. It is no. one hundred percent free after you buy it. Um, <laughs> so just. <laughs> What, get one, the, one low price and it's free the rest of the offseason. That's right. UltimateDraftKit.com. <laughs> I think we need to shut this down. Hopefully you enjoyed the surprise episode today. We wanted to celebrate with you. Mock draft episode on Tuesday next week. Ooh. Thursday we're doing some keep, trade, cut, which should be a lot of fun. And if you want to watch Jason dance, that's YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. That will do it. That was pretty fun. I don't yeah. know how many minds were changed in here, but... Um, Hopefully two of them. The information's out there. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.